Welcome to the highlights of the Australia A v Zimbabwe match at the WACA ground in Perth. A very important game, first time the Australian A's have appeared in this competition and uh, they have the job in front of them against Zimbabwe who played very well on Friday against the Australian team. This is the team announced for the Australian A side, Damien Martin Skipper, Matthew Hayden, Darren Lehman, Justin Langer and Ricky Ponting, all good players, all good young batsmen there, Tom Moody the all-rounder, Gavin Robertson the off-spinner, Phil Emery, wicketkeeper, two experienced bowlers in Paul Rifle and Merv Hughes. And Joe Angel makes up the 11 there with Greg Rowell, 12th man from Queensland. Now, the Zimbabweans had uh, plenty of problems with their side. Wayne James, the wicketkeeper, had to pull out with bursitis in his right knee. And Andy Flower, the skipper at the top of the order there, is going to keep wickets as well. Grant Flower, Alistair Campbell, uh, Dave Houghton, Guy Whittall, Mark Decker, Ian Bushart across from New Zealand as a replacement because of the injuries. Gary Martin, Paul Strang, Heath Streak and David Brain. And Edo Brandes was uh, a late withdrawal from the side. Gary Martin came in, he was originally to be 12th man and that position now is being filled by Stephen Peel. So good conditions here at the Wacker, lovely looking pitch and a fast outfield. Temperature around about 27 degrees and we join play in the third over. Five runs are on the board. It's uh, Joe Angel bowling to Andy Flower. Your commentators, Tony Gregg and Ian Chappell. Oh, and very nearly got it. That would have been a great catch. Well, it went flying away, square of the wicket. Ponting stuck his hand out, and it very nearly stuck. He was coming in very quickly to save the one. All of a sudden, he was confronted with a catch. He saved a certain four. I think that's uh, what you would have to say about that performance. Well, that's nicely played. Just caressed through the offside. It's uh, running away down towards the extra cover boundary. And they'll end up getting themselves three. So Grant Flower hitting that uh, into the wind. Much tougher to hit boundaries on that side of the ground than it is uh, on the other side of the ground. That sort of shot hit on the other side of the ground would have just comfortably run away for four. It's quite amazing the difference hitting downwind and into the doctor. A good shot too. That's Andy Flower this time. Really hitting that one straight down the ground and that will go to the boundary for four. Well, just beginning to warm to the task, the Zimbabweans. Oh, he's got that away as well. Now that will go for four as well. What a good shot. Just a little short. He leant back and really flayed that one. Way over the top of the, uh, the gully fieldsman. And so far, 12 off this over. goes again there's a man down there Hughes trying to get to it well and that really did uh, keep going down there it almost reached Hughes who was uh, stretching out to his left and uh, it got quite close to him just watch this it's one of the longest cut shots I've ever seen that's quite a long boundary down there towards the old stand I think Merv originally was uh, thinking about cutting off the four and suddenly realized it was almost going to carry to him shot again that's running away down towards the extra cover boundary that'll get there too I think unless it's uh, into the fence for four. Five fours and an over Greggy remember that? Remember it well in a test match what's more and that is the end of the over no wicket to 25 what a start this is for the Zimbabweans unfortunate there Paul Rifle and it's going to go for four moving into the commentary position now it's Richie Benno and Bill Lowry thank you Ian Chappell yes a great start by Zimbabwe they're playing their shots the wickets good and uh, they're making the bowlers uh, bowl very straight well they're quite attacking fields all of them although uh, Angel was carted around and uh, so too now Paul Rifle that's the fast part of the ground, and that was a lovely stroke. It certainly was, and this left and right-handed combination working well for Zimbabwe. The ball was, uh, that was a reasonable ball, but there was just some width there. Andy Flower won the toss, left to bat. It's a great start. As right, rifles replaced by Mervyn Hughes at the river end. Immediately he gets to off stump, and he's whacked him through cover again. Superbly played, running down the hill. 
That will make it for four more. And this is a great start by Zimbabwe. Just as though they've been out there flailing the bat either. They were all very, very good strokes. Balls a leg break and he puts it away nicely. He doesn't uh, beat Weeman at fine leg. Brings up the 50 in the ninth over. And Angels toured uh, Pakistan. Rifle and Hughes are experienced cricketers. It's not as if they're youngsters in the Australian A side. And this is a wonderful start by the Flower Brothers. They've been very positive as they were against the Australian side on Friday. It's going to be Paul Rifle. He's bowling for the members' end. It's an edge and it's fine. Scurry around, could go for four again. And it does. Well, it's all happening here at the Wacker, and it's not good news for Australia, A. Eh? Zimbabwe away to a fire. Gavin Robertson is the man there trying to save the boundary. And it was the ball that got him in the mouth. Now we're at 69 as Tony Gregg and Ian Chappell take up the commentary. Thanks, Bill. Unfortunately, he's thrown it away. Top edge, sky two point. And the catch taken by Paul Rifle. So really, that is a waste. Yes, uh, it certainly is. He was going absolutely magnificently, Andy Flower. 44 runs or uh, just 56 balls. And he really should have uh, continued to adopt his initial approach. He was trying to hit this one to leg, whip it away, and uh, as a result, just hit uh, the front edge there with height in the air. It swirled around a little bit. And uh, catch taken there by rifle. No trouble at all. So the end of a very, very impressive partnership. Some tremendous running between the wickets. Andy Flower after 44 or 56 balls. Zimbabwe, one for 16. Another exciting stroke player at the crease now. Alastair Campbell, the number three player. But unfortunately, he's not uh, the runner between wickets that Andy Flower is. The father of uh, Andy and Grant. That is the gentleman there on the uh, on the right. He is the father. So he'd be... Uh, well, he's got a bit of a smile on his face. 26 to Grant Flower. Two to Alastair Campbell. It's one for 73. First wicket falling at 69. And that's been rewarded. Tom Moody's accurate bowling has picked up the wicket. And it's aided by some good captaincy from Damien Martin. Very good performance by Moody. He really has come in and uh, popped it straight on a length and really made it difficult for these two. And this is the wicket. Just uh, watch that one. Just try to push it away on the onside. The man in there nice and close. No problems at all. And so that's the end of Grant Fowler. Out for 26. He faced 49 balls. And it's now two for 73. Dave Houghton is a former captain of Zimbabwe. And also uh, at one stage, certainly in the 83 World Cup, he was their wicket keeper. There's 14 runs coming off the last 10 overs. First 10 overs, we had 59 runs coming. So it was Zimbabwe dominating in the early stages. And now the Australian A side right back into it and winning the second half. That's a good shot from... Campbell, all running away very fast down that hill. Two for 77. Houghton, one of the older members of the Test Cricket Fraternity, International Cricket Fraternity. Up there with a good piece of fielding. Matthew Hayden again on this occasion, getting off the ground. Ball chopped into the wicket area, bounces very high. Matthew Hayden quick to his left and very athletic piece of fielding. Good bit of bowling from Joe Angel, no reward. Will help build the confidence. Joe Angel often bowls uh, what would be the in swinger of the left hander. That one just slants across him. With a fair bit of pace there. That's a very good shot. It's into the gap, mid-wicket. Moody coming around from square leg position. 
Next, uh, Alastair uh, Campbell's not a good runner. He's been run out three times on tour so far, and uh, Houghton's 37. Finally gets one down to third man. That's the third attempt. That brings up the 100 in the 31st over. What an amazing change when you think that 59 had come off the first 10. Still plenty of bounce. Gavin Robertson uh, doing a good job varying his pace. He's not a big spinner of the ball, Robertson. He's got good control, a little bit of drift. There's another run out here. Gone. Yes, that's foolish cricket. Really is when you occupy the crease. There was a yes, no, and really a muck up. And that's uh, bad news for Zimbabwe. Just they've just kept applying the pressure, the Australian A side. Bowlers have bowled tidily and the fieldsmen have backed them to the hilt. Here's a good example. Houghton starting out. It's not his call. It's Alastair Campbell's call. And he was quite right to send him back. And Houghton well short. It's three for 101. New batsman coming to the crease before the third wicket for 100. One runs on the board. Foolish run out. It's been a very disappointing performance by Zimbabwe and a great performance by Australia, A. Eh? Sweeps, gets it fine. Angel coming around, finally a boundary. Four runs in the wicket from the over. Four for 105. Tom Moody to take up the attack from the river end. And he's knocked him over, getting too far across. Poor shot, Moody on target, but Decker going nowhere. Has knocked over, now it is four for 106. Yes, that's that obsession with trying to hit the ball on the onside. He's wandered away to uh, wander down the track and probably a little bit to the offside in trying to change the length. Tom Moody's just got a peek at leg stump and he's been able to hit it. Second wicket for Tom Moody and Zimbabwe are now four down. I whittle the new batsman taking guard by Terry Prue. Barbary and Strife now at 4 for 106. Campbell on 20. Little to face his first delivery. He's put his side in a lot of trouble. 33 over stage. Great figures. One run and a wicket for Tom Moody. It's 4 for 106. The doctor's in, growing stronger now across the ground. Suit Robertson's drift. Right arm, orthodox spinner. Good shot. Well filled. Brilliant out, surely. Great work, Matthew Hayden. That is superb cricket. Yes, a diving save and then throwing whilst uh, on his knees and throwing very accurately to Phil Emery. So Guy Whittle is gone. Run out for Nort. Thing here is the way he stays balanced, even though he's sliding on his knees. That's a terrific throw uh, off the knees. So Whittle is gone for Nort. Two run outs uh, have really set Zimbabwe back. Five wickets down now as Whittle goes for a duck. It's five for 106. We strife at five for 106 and push out the new batsman. It's close, he's gonna very, very close. I think he just got back. Called for the photo. It's a photo here at the Wacker. It's all happening as far as run outs are concerned. And Alastair Campbell uh, this time must take complete blame. There was an easy run there. And if the man's out, Campbell's got to get the blame. I think he's just uh, got to get the benefit of the doubt there. Not out. Green light. Good shot. It's into the gap. Yeah. Five one hundred and forty. There's Richie Ben Owen, Tony Gregg take up the commentary. Yes, and Moody haven't completed eight overs. About to start his ninth now. Two for thirteen. It's in the air, and this will be out straight down mid on throat. Miss hit that one. 
But once again, Moody bang on target, and Robertson, who's standing down there at uh, mid on, had the ball coming straight to him. And good cricketers don't drop those straightforward catches. So Moody is struck, and he now has three for 13. And you can see the inexperience here. Zimbabwe not quite sure how to go about uh, these last dozen or so overs, but uh, that is certainly not the way. It's six for 121. Paul Strang is the new batsman, just 24 years of age. He's also the leg spinner. So Tom Moody really enjoying this little spell of bowling. It might have been just outside the line. Big confident appeal, though. Very, very close, I would think. The butch shot five. Strang has just arrived at the crease. He hasn't scored yet. Zimbabwe in trouble now. Six for 121 after a fantastic start. Robinson continuing now with that uh, little drifter of his, and uh, that one's got past the backward point. Rifles after it. They'll end up getting two here. Perhaps even come back to the third. Well, that's a bit of a break. in the air and this will be easy catch as well well that's easily taken Damon Martin running around to his left and making an easy catch Strang trying to get the one over the top again feeling as if he was bogged down trying to hit himself out of trouble and uh, succeeding only in getting them all into more trouble that uh, is uh, the result of the drift that uh, Gavin Robertson gets there just uh, swings or swerves it away from the right-hander. He's trying to hit away on the onside and duck for straight. Seven for 124. Martin is the new batsman. Butchot on 10. Robinson to continue. Yeah, they handle things. And that one's uh, gone running away down towards the boundary and they'll get four for that. So that was a wide delivery. He hasn't bowled many, but that was uh, one of the few loose ones. Just five overs remaining. Zimbabwe made uh, 166 on Friday. Matthew Hayden, and he's knocked him down. Well done, Matthew Hayden. Gee, his work's been brilliant in the field today. That was the old backhander. He's so quick across the ground. He's a big man. He must be six foot two, six foot three. But he was at the ball quickly and he judged the bounce and was the old backhander found uh, martin short of his ground just watch this this is uh, youth at its best beautiful work the crowd here enjoying it australia a doing a grand job in the field zimbabwe slumped to eight for one four five Heath streak who was so impressive with the ball the other night match against Australia He's now got a bat out a few overs to try and get the score up to around about the 170 mark yeah. well by Murphy's right through with the Yorker yes that was beautifully bowled he bowled one the previous over a bat on it this time he angled it in beautifully with the breeze just a little bit of in swing and that's superb bowling by a very experienced campaigner. Close to the stumps, there's the angle in. And back goes the leg stump. Australian A doing everything right here at the Wacker. A duck. It's nine for one for eight. David Brain has one ball to face from Merv Hughes. And he gets it right up there in the block hole again. This time Brain gets the bat on it. 150 comes up for Zimbabwe in the 47th over, but they've lost nine. See, there early on it was a bit of a slaughter up to a 10 over stage in a maiden, and the loss of a wicket, and then all of a sudden it was uh, hard work for Zimbabwe. And Bill, I hope you take back blowing reports to Victoria. The Western Australians giving uh, Merv a great reception at the end of his 10 overs, and also giving him a good reception uh, when he came on. That's got to be a first. No, it was fantastic. Mervyn Hughes went down a fine leg early on and was given the ball. He got a 
a great uh, welcome from the crowd here. And Willie Marsh stand end. Just wide of the man who's inside the circle, Gavin Robertson at fine leg. So, in the last over, Zimbabwe getting a bit of a run on. That's very well hit. Long chase for Joe Angel. They should be getting three. Decided either it's horrible running or they've decided that Martin is the man who's hitting the ball well and might as well leave him on strike. I guess you could uh, forgive them on that occasion. That's well hit. And Brown. Boundary, not quite. Yes, it is. It gets past Joe Angel. So, in fact, Zimbabwe have equaled their score of uh, Friday in the match against Australia with 166. It was a brilliant performance from the Australian A side. They were well led by Damian Martin. The feeling was great and the bowling very, very purposeful. This is the way the card looked at the end. Nine for 166. Top score 44 for Andy Flower. 25 for Martin, who is unbeaten. And Brain was there at the end as well. Nine for 166. Now, the bowling figures, Joe Angel was hammered early on. Finished up with uh, 10 overs, one maiden, none for 43. Rifle, none for 50. The one I was most interested in was Merv Hughes. I thought he bowled very well in Hobart the other day for the Australian 11. 10 overs here at the Wacker in Perth, one maiden, two for 21, and he bowled really well. That will be of great interest to the Australian selectors. Tom Moody was magnificent, 10 overs, five maidens, three for 16. Gavin Robertson, 10 overs, one maiden, one for 34. 167 needed by the Australian A. The asking rate is 3.34 per over. And uh, although on paper they should get it uh, with relative ease, Zimbabwe did field and bowl pretty well against the Australians on Friday. David Brain will be the bowler, left arm over the wicket, and quite useful, as he showed on Friday. In the commentary box, Bill Laurie, and with him is Tony Gregg. Thank you, Richie. Yes, Brain to take up the attack with the assistance of the breeze from the river end. No ball call. Leaving it off the mark, top edge. That's his highest score, just 67. That was against New Zealand in Sarja in the season 93-94. He's also a left-hander. It's going to go in. Matthew Hayden. Nicely driven. That could be four. Good, positive, strong off-drive. Beautiful off the front foot. He really is a front foot player, Matthew Hayden, be it the Gabber or the Wacker. He likes to get onto the front foot. Hit that superbly. Heath Streak to take up the attack from the members end, going into the strong Fremantle doctor coming from Birdman down to Long On. Beautiful shot, beautifully placed. Not before here, Lehman's just a bit slow. I think he was set off a three. That's Darren Lehman at his best. You see the wind up there. That's up the hill. Got to go all the way. And he really has got good force. Struck that into the gap. Yes, he certainly did. That was over pitched, and uh, his eyes lit up as he saw it coming. And you could see his bottom hand coming to that one as he crunched it through the offside field. Now we're good for 22. Targets 167 for Australia A at the Wacker. That's uh, beautifully placed. Not quite for me to the bat, running down the hill. Yes, it will get there too. Just get there. <laughs> it kept him interested, though. You're right, it wasn't off the meat of the bat, otherwise it would have got there a lot quicker. But uh, certainly was good placement. Yep. Bat and pad there, they look for two and get it. That one did uh, bounce a bit for Andy Fowler, who's keeping wicket. That's a very hard surface. Keepers have got to be very careful, yeah? Just watch this one come in. Now 29 after 7, as Richie Bonneau and Ian Chappell take up the commentary. Oh, 
Uh, it's well ball. Instant decision there by the umpire at the pavilion end. Members end and Darren Lehman is on his way. Uh, Matthew Hayden is on his way. The first breakthrough there for Zimbabwe. He streaks ball pretty well. Streak is very confident. Hayden for a moment was uh, slightly uh, disturbed. Wasn't absolutely certain what had happened, but he is now. He's 16 and out. One for 30. Damien Martin, the skipper, coming in at number three. David Brain is the bowler from the river end here at the Wacker. Left arm over the wicket. There's a no ball call. So it's... Um, it's a slightly indifferent performance from David Brown today, not as impressive as the other day. Martin, on the other hand, has just picked up three runs. There's four for him. It didn't go all that far away from Andy Clower, the captain wicketkeeper. But it was an authentic stroke. It wasn't just a, a little nick that went down the fine leg. He got it uh, just about off the part of the bat uh, he was aiming at. There's a nice stroke. Just didn't quite time it. It's going against the breeze and slightly uphill. But, uh, miss out by a couple of yards reaching the boundary. Baines in the bowling now. Guy Whittle coming on from the members' end. Heath Streak has finished his uh, short spell. And Lehman showing absolute disdain for the bowling of Guy Whittle there. He'd marched well out of his crease, realising that there was no fine leg or that fine leg was up inside the circle. As soon as it was on his pads, just flicked it away down the leg side. Very much a slower ball from uh, Guy Whittle. Shouts of catch it, and uh, Damian Martin has fallen to his own trap. He took a catch uh, in that position in Zimbabwe's innings. Placed some good fields, but now he's fallen to exactly that same fieldsman at short mid-wicket. Guy Whittle has picked up the wicket. It was an authentic uh, stroke away there to uh, the man in that mid-wicket position. Damian Martin goes, and the second wicket down for the Australian A-side. Zimbabwe have every right to be very happy there. It's two for 56. Justin Langer is the new batsman. Guy Whittle, the bowler. Left hander, Justin Langer. Career strike rate in limited overs matches is just below the 100 mark. Bill Laurie has come into the commentary box now, and with him is Tony Green. There's not a lot of swing there for the bowlers. There's the breeze coming across the ground from left to right and screen, but certainly ideal for batting. Oh, he's got that away nicely. Well, we've seen him deflect one or two, and uh, that was absolutely perfect. They've got the man very square on the boundary, and that's his third boundary, and a very good shot, too. Anything that's on leg stump, if you've got all the fielders square, you can get it away fine, it's going to be four. Yes, this is a new um, method that Darren Lehman's using, and I think he's a bit vulnerable with it. They've got the man at uh, square leg, square for the one he takes off his toes. That was far too wide. The angle was there, he just helped on its way, but he's just lifting the ball in the air. That's fine, there's nobody there, and it's always going to be four, but... As the 350 to Perth comes in towards the station. Tell you what, nice little uh, scenic uh, trip on the 350, isn't it? Well, that's into the gap, and uh, that'll run it down to the boundary. It's got the wind at its back. It's a long boundary, and I'll tell you what, he doesn't want to pick that one up down there. <laughs> there she goes, into the fence before. Good shot, too. Yes, yeah, Justin Langer off the mark with a beautiful um, shot off the back foot, playing on his home ground. Once again, uh, David Brain just been a fraction short in his east half and it's beautifully balanced and he just beat the man at point. And once it gets past you here, it's four. four. 
Good shot. That'll be four straight down the ground. We've seen one or two in that direction. Right off the meat of the bat, down to the fence for four. And so Australia A moved to two for 74. Well, they're having a lot of fun, that's for sure. I think the idea is to get the air out. That thing's been bobbing around all day. Kids have been having a ball. It's a good shot into the gap, and that'll go down towards the boundary. And despite the breeze, it's going to go for four. That is well timed. Very good shot. So four fours now to Lehman. So two for 85, Australia. And uh, they've now noticed themselves ahead of Zimbabwe, who were one for 73 after 19 overs. Langer and Lehman beginning to put together quite a tidy partnership here. And uh, it looks as if it's going to be Martin to take up the attack for the Zimbabweans. That's beautifully played. That's a glorious on drive. Justin Langer showing this in good nick. Yes, uh, it won't be long before we'll see Strang, I don't think. It'll be tough for him. That's uh, missed field. So the pressure is starting to come to bear on the Zimbabweans in the field. It's going to be hard for Strang with the two left-handers in. He was very impressive on Friday. Well, this is going to be interesting now. Strang is being brought into the attack. That's well played. Nice uh, use of his feet too. And he got right to the pitch of that one. Smashed it away. That's very good batting. It's a great shot, but encouragement for the spinner as well. If he, if he bowls well, and Lehman comes at him on this pitch, and he can deceive him in fight with the ball spinning from off to leg. He played that beautifully. He gave himself some room there and just crunched it down the ground. But Strang should be encouraged by that to see a batsman leave his crease. And nice placement there and uh, comfortably black. And oh, just a little bit of a limp there from Lehman. That's the end of the over. It's two for 98. Justin Langer, on the other hand, will have to play a shot whenever it's presented. Is that the 100 for Australia A. And uh, the experience of batting a lot on the wacker showing here with Justin Langer. Doesn't have to be that short at the wacker, and you can play that pull shot comfortably because of the extra bounce. Quickly into position. That's a good partnership. The last wicket fell at 56, so it's a 48-run partnership. That brings up the 50 partnership in 50 balls. Just the sort of partnership that the Australian A team needed. Just a couple of wickets. Two for 108. See that one uh, magnificent over for Zimbabwe early on, the third over. Really good early. Be caught at mid on and deceived in the flight there, Justin Langer. That's well bowled. Spring, the leg spinner bowled very well the other evening against Australia. Wasn't able to, uh, they weren't able to get him away. Justin Langer very disappointed there bit of flight and just a bit of turn enough to get the inner half of the bat Ian Butchart the fielder takes a comfortable catch at mid on all straying very happy with that as are the Zimbabweans Justin Langer not quite so happy Australia a three for 108 Ricky Ponting 19 years of age that just shows you there his mercantile mutual record a higher score of 59 career average of 24.7 I'd be surprised if that doesn't improve. Oh. The wrong one there, and a bit of turn and bounce. I don't think Ricky Ponting picked it, otherwise uh, he wouldn't have been padding up to it. Spun quite sharply. Oh. So a yeah, wicket there for, and that's oh. very close as well. He's gone for the replay. Ricky Ponting taking the short single. Grant Flower, I think, maybe the fielder there. Short mid wicket, Ricky Ponting. Another wrong one inside half of the bat again. Tries to take the quick single to get off the mark. The underarm throw. 
Uh, Gary Martin, the fielder, taken the ball taken by the bowler, and Ricky Ponding's in a lot of trouble. This was pretty well fielded, going to the left-hand side. He got there quickly and was able to steady and get the right-hand throw. Ricky Ponting is on his bike. You can see there why the umpire had to call for the video replay because he didn't have time to get absolutely uh, into position. So Ricky Ponting run out without scoring. Fourth wicket down with 108 on the board. And one of the bowling heroes from this morning, Tom Moody, 29 years of age. A lot more experienced than Ricky Ponting. Highest score of the match so far, Lehman. Oh. And the flower direct hit. There could be an overthrow here. Lehman will come back. That brings up his 50. Pretty controlled and restrained innings by Darren Lehman. Went out there with the view to uh, take the opportunities if they were there. He likes to play his shots, but the Zimbabwean bowlers and the Zimbabwean captains had some pretty good fields. So 51 now, Darren Lehman. 51 from 56 balls. So he hasn't been slow by any means. Now he pulls out one of the more aggressive shots, and that'll run down to the boundary. 7 boundaries for Darren Lehman. Captain to that uh, last delivery where they ran the easy single and then got the overthrow. Captain yelling at the fieldsman and telling him to stop the singles. At the halfway mark, Australia a four for 120. Zimbabwe two for 80 at the same stage. Really the only way Zimbabwe can win this game now is to bowl the Australian side out. Aaron Lehman doesn't really need to take any risks. He's an adventurous player. But there's no point getting loose at this stage and losing a couple of wickets and bringing the Zimbabweans back into the game. In the air, one bounce, two bounces, and away she goes. Only four runs. It's not in Darren Lehman's nature to play defensively or conservatively. If the ball's there to be hit, he likes to hit it and hit it hard. You see there the advantage of the left-hander with the ball spinning into him. Swings with it, and he's such a powerful hitter and good timer of the ball. He's only got to get it slightly into a gap, and it's away to the boundary. This one's a bit finer. The run now for the backward square leg fielder might be too long. And that'll run into the boundary. The field runs away down this end. Amazing how fast the ball travels over the outfield. It wasn't off the middle of the bat, more of an underneath edge, but Darren Lehman knew that if he could get it fine, all he had to do was get some bat on it. After 26 overs, we can see the comparison there as the A team start to run away from the Zimbabwe at that stage. The bowler going around the, the wicket, so Darren Lehman just having the side screen adjusted. Side screen you can see there in the foreground as Paul Strang goes around the wicket. And the fine sweep again. Darren Lehman again knowing that he just had to get some bat on it and it would run away down the hill as it's done there. Paul Strang frustrated. He might be thinking that it was a lucky shot, but a calculated gamble there by Darren Lehman. Ball pitched outside, off stump. He's just swiped it away on the leg side. 29 overs gone. Australia A, four for 139. Requiring 167 for victory. Moody on strike. Well, he is uh, a very good player who's improved his uh, all-round capabilities at limited overs level by uh, taking the new ball and being able to bowl very solid medium pace. It's four for 146. Nick, the bottom edge, you get four. Well, when you're hot, you're hot. And he slashed at that, got an edge. Ran on the ground, beat the wicketkeeper, Andy Flower, and went for four. He hasn't had too many false strokes uh, out there, Darren Lehman, and that uh, wasn't a chance. 
not sure why he's doing this uh, with the breeze coming from square leg across to point which would really help his wrong and Lehman gets that as Ian Chappell said earlier where's the slip where is the slip he's on holidays at the moment they pick up three oh, it's four is it it's four so Lehman there trying to cut against the spin and the bounce and just hit it straight where first slip would normally be Oh, that's beautifully played. Oh, that's great. Sweep shot is at attention. You've seen the ball early, Darren Lehman. One of the things about Paul Strang is that uh, he's come into the Zimbabwean side without any previous experience. They've chosen the touring side. They've put him in, and uh, there's been nothing in other international matches uh, to let us know anything about him. He's played domestic cricket in uh, Zimbabwe, but he looks quite good to the extent that he's now picked up a wicket. He's beaten Lehman, he's beaten him with the spin and the flight, drawn him down the pitch. Uh, has him very, very unhappy. I didn't be muttering the odd word or two, and Paul Strang has struck. Yes, well, there you go. I'm not sure what Darren Lehman was trying to do. I think that may have been a wrong one. It seemed to hold its line. It certainly didn't spin in towards Darren Lehman. That's uh, just reward for good effort from this young leg spinner. As the Pitt has thrown the ball up, got a fine innings for Darren Lehman. He's going at 85 against 84. It's five for 157. Yeah, but Strang has bowled pretty well. He stranded Lehman, beat him in the flight, and it was the wrong one as well, so it left him even swinging across the line. He couldn't get near it. Easy stumping and very, very well bowled. Yes, he's a good young sp spinner, and uh, it gets away from the wick keeper. Wait for the call here, but I'm pretty sure it'll be buys. Four buys, an interesting over. Good crowd in today. They've uh, been keen to see the Australian A team in action for the first time in this series. I think what will stick in their mind will be Hayden's fielding. It was magnificent. Three run outs. And, uh, it. And that's big win for Australia and they're getting a great round of applause from the crowd they're happy winning run hit by Western Australian and uh, the side skippered by WA man and that's the Australian a card five for 167 nice performance there from Darren Lehman 85 from only 84 balls faced Hayden 16 Martin 15 Langer 24 a duck for Ponting run out quite brilliantly by Martin and Moody remains 16 not out and Emery won. 5 for 167, only took 35.1 overs, a good scoring rate, and that's reflected in the bowling figures there for Zimbabwe. Brain, none for 40, Streak, one for 32, Whittle, one for 18, and down the bottom there, Paul Strang, eight overs, two maidens, and two for 32. And for all his efforts out in the field there with the ball, quite brilliant, Tom Moody, and then being not out with the bat, he was named man of the match. Very good performance from him in this Australia A side and Australia A themselves have gone to the top of the competition table. That's the way it looks at the moment. Two points and a net run rate of 1.43, which is the reason they're up ahead of Australia, who also have two points from uh, the one win over Zimbabwe. Their net run rate is just 0.21. And for the moment, from the WACA, it's goodbye.